Hello guys, my name is Marunas and today we are going to learn how to build a flashbot in under 10 minutes. So let's get to it. What is a flashbot? It's a tool to remain hidden from the mempool. The mempool is where all the transactions go. When you place a transaction, it goes to a temporary place called the mempool and it stays there until it's confirmed. This is very important to create some kind of private transactions that are not affected by by miners basically you can connect to miners directly and it allows you to extract value from decentralized exchanges when someone buys a token you can buy before them and get a better price and things like that so how big is flashbots they have 730 million dollars extracted from DeFi in the past year so it's a pretty big deal there's so much money there from this tool and it's the most used MEV protocol by searches. MEV means maximal extractable value and it's simply the, the value you can extract from transactions. Let's say by liquidating uh, a loan that someone made on a decentralized protocol and things like that. The majority of miners use it to gain some extra profit and it's used by the majority of the miners currently in the network. Well, validators in this case. So let's take a look at an example. Tether is 1.01 on Uniswap. And imagine that on SushiSwap it's 0 0.99 cents per Tether. If that was the case, you could buy on SushiSwap and sell it on Uniswap at a higher price and get the difference. However, those opportunities are not often, not common. And when they do happen, people quickly grab them. Now, if you try to make that transaction buy on Uniswap sell, I mean buy on SushiSwap and sell on Uniswap, you will be seen by miners. They will see your transaction in the mempool, they will see the increase in earnings, and they will simply copy that transaction executed themselves before you, so they get the profit. So what you what you do is you use the flashbots utility and you bypass directly the mempool and you send it directly to miners so there's no way nobody can see the transaction until it's actually confirmed and we are gonna build a simple MEV bundle bundler a bundler simply contains multiple transactions in a block and we'll see the steps to implement that so that we are able to create a tool that allows us to send private transactions directly to miners with a flashbot let's go to it all right so this is the code and these are the steps now because this this is a fairly complicated tool i'm gonna show you the most simple example possible and this one consists on simply taking two transactions that send ether to a user to a user and we will put them together into a bundle and send it to flashbots so they execute it privately so see, these are the steps we import the required libraries we set up the provider for Gorly. in this case we are going to use Gorly, the testnet for ethereum we will create a flashbots identifier then we will create the flashbots provider then we will set the required variables that we need for this to work we will sign the transactions using both types there is type 1 and type 2 transactions and we will run the simulation to make sure it works. After that, we'll check the results and send 10, 10 bundlers, bundles to the, to the miners so they confirm it. So I'm not gonna write the code from scratch. I'm gonna use the code that I wrote previously here so that we go faster. So first we import the required libraries. Go ahead and create a JavaScript file and import ethers, install ethers and install flashbots ethers provider bundle we will need the wallet big number ethers itself and providers and from flashbots we will need the bundle provider and the bundler resolution this we'll use this at the end right now either you don't care about it next we will need a provider a provider is simply a connection to the blockchain in this case we will use the json rpc provider and this is my connection string it's a go early connection then we create a flashbots identifier a flashbots identifier is simply a wallet an ethereum account that is used 
to sign your bundles to to identify who is creating those bundles and this is necessary for reputation purposes and to make sure you are accepted earlier and things like that so in order to do that we create a new wallet we pass the private key and we pass the provider that we just created this is the authentication signer we will use throughout the entire application next we create a simple start function and i'm going to use this type of notation and we're going to make sure it's a sync we need it to be a sync and then we will execute this function we need to put everything inside the function because we will run a synchronous code so we'll just go ahead and create a flash post provider which is this one and as you can see we use the flash post, flash pots bundle provider we click on with we access the create property we pass the provider here this one and the signer that we created before and we use the relay this is the connection to flashbots so it's how we communicate to it now we're going to set up some required variables that we will need remember we're building an application that takes two transfers a transfer from me to another user and again the same transaction both of them into a bundle and sends that to flashbots so that it's bypassing the mempool so yeah, we will create some functions. We, I mean, variables. We use way because we need it. Big number that from ten. Well, I'll simply copy all of this because it's faster. We want to go fast here. So yeah, we need this, this variables way. This is simple. Simply a um, a unit in Ethereum. We will use the legacy gas price. We will take it away, I will multiply by 13. We can use any other number, but this is just to guarantee that the transaction is confirmed. Because when you create a bundle and when you send it to Flashbots, you need to give something, you need to get give a reward in the form of extra gas to miners for for them to accept your bundle. This is how we do it with the extra way. Then the priority feed, we will use this in the Ethereum type 2 transactions transfers. I'll explain that in a moment. Then we need the block number. We need to access the block, the current block. This is the most recent block. We simply access the block, all the properties, and uh, we get the maximum fee in future blocks. This is for the new update that Ethereum had. And basically, we take the base fee and we calculate the potential increase in the base fee for the next six blocks you can look at it look at up look that up and it's a simple way to guarantee that our block is at least has the the, the base the correct base fee now we create the sign transactions we will send 0 0.1 ether to to the to another account basically it's just a, a regular transfer like when you go to to, uh, to MetaMask and you transfer some Ether to another account, this is the same thing, but with code. So yeah, this is the type two transaction. As you can see, it has the type property and we use the type two. This is just, like I said, a regular transfer to this address. And okay, let me first explain this. We use the sign bundle from Flashbots and this simply tells us this is the transaction we want to send and this is the person that signs the transaction because as you know there is always a signer for every transaction then we pass the maximum the maximum <coughs> gas fee this is the maximum amount you're willing to pay for this transaction to go the maximum priority gas fee in this case it's just that much data it's empty we, we don't send any data if you want to send a transaction that does something more complex you will update this property the chain id is five girly and the value is this one we don't need the gas limit property now this is a regular a traditional a legacy transfer as you can see the same thing we have a signer and then the recipient the gas price data and the value that we want to send this is just to show you the different types of transfers that you can do in ethereum you can make both of them like this and in a bundle you can include minimum at least two transactions and you can add as many as you want as, as long as they fit in a block of course 
this is important for making you know complex type of extractable value functions now we will run the simulation now when you create a flashbot you need to simulate your transaction and the way you do that is with this function si simulate flashbot provider simulate <coughs> so you pass the sign transactions this ones and you plus you pass the block number that you want to include it into so if you access the documentation here it says the block tag which is basically the next block you want it to be included in the next block and yeah you simulate this in fact let me show you how that looks like let's run this let's do a note um arbitration i believe no it's called start a now let's run node tutorial.js okay okay so yeah let's run this these are some contracts that i've been working on but for the purpose of simplicity we will use this simple tutorial so now we do note start tutorial in fact start tutorial is this file as you can see and it simply includes a bubble register and the file that we created now this is an error here all right, so as you can see, I changed the legacy gas price. Basically, we need to increase the amount that we're giving to miners. And the simulation is, you know, it runs successfully. You can log this and see that it works and that it, it's included. We'll recheck the results of the simulation like that. One second. So to check the results, we simply use this code. And this, you know, there's a property called first revert that it is added to the simulation if there is an error. And you simply access the property and you show the error. Otherwise, you simply show the block number. Let me run it so you can see the results right here. Okay, so you can see the block number right there. Now I included some curly bracelets that shouldn't be there but yeah basically the simulation was successful meaning our transactions were transferred to the miners and they included those transactions in the block and they executed properly without going to the mempool which is great to hide important transactions that you don't want to be seen by others because people see transactions and they you know take advantage of them now we will send them 10 bundles to guarantee that they are included in the in a flashbot generated block this what does this mean this means that flashbots is a block creator they they create blocks themselves they gather transactions they create blocks but sometimes you know there are many different miners the different block producers and sometimes they don't create the block themselves which means we need to try to include our transaction at least 10 times to make sure we add the transaction into a block that flashbots has created that i know that's confusing but but yeah that's how it is so uh, yeah first we loop 10 times starting at one and ending at 10 and we simply send the wrong row bundle with the transaction this is like the simulation that you seen before but in this case we're sending the real bundle to the miners so they include it into a block and we pass the, the transactions and the block number that we are interested in in this case the block number increases by one every time because if the next block doesn't work you include it in the next block and so on then we show some messages the bundle hash this is simply indicating you know the the hash of the, the bundle that we created we wait for the bundle to finish processing and we show the response now here's where we use we wait for this to finish and here's where we use the bundle resolution that we imported here earlier you see flash post bundle resolution we check that if the response uh, means if the response means that the flash but it's included or account nouns is, is too high yeah I think this one this is not necessary 
So with the flash bots, if the bundle is included, we simply show the message and we exit it. And if not, we show simple the, the stats on the block number or whatever, and, and the user stats, which may be interesting to see. So yeah, this is the application, let's run it. Let me explain again everything before our final run. We import everything, we create the providers and the accounts that we are gonna use. This is the identifier for your Flashbot account. Then we set up some variables, um, some transactions that we are gonna use, that we're gonna send these other transactions that we want to bypass the mempool and we simulate everything this is very important to make sure there are no errors so you don't waste you know time because you know if your bundles are not correct you may see an error but you won't pay gas at all because they, they are not included into the mempool now if there's an error we revert them we, we show the error and things like that let me return that make sure we are stopping and then we try to include those bundles into 10 blocks and wait until they are included okay let me run this so i clean this clear and i do note start tutorial let's see what happens Okay, so the simulation was successful. We submitted a bundle and it says passed without inclusion, meaning the bundle is correct, but it hasn't been included yet. So it's trying again, it's trying to include the bundle into the next block. We're waiting for that to process. And yes, the bundle is included. Now, if you go to, to MetaMask, I was using, I believe this account as you can see, it has 0.08 Goerli ETH. Just to show that this works right now, remember this number 008. So we run the, this function again, this program again. And what this does, as, as you saw before, it sends Ether to this account in two transactions. Every time it sends 0.01 Ether. 0.001 Ether. So at the end, if this works successful, successfully, we should see an increase in, in two of those Gordy Ether. So yeah, right now it's doing the same thing, is trying to include the bundle into a block, all those two transactions, it's bypassing the main pool, it's sending it to flashbots, they are creating a block and they are trying to include it while also giving some gas, some rewards to the creators of the block. That's the, their incentive for including your transactions above others. Okay, so you can see it's high priority. This is something that you develop over time as you send bundles and as you, as you work with this, you, your priority increases. Therefore, you are able to be accepted more times. We're waiting for this right now. Okay, so the bundle is included and you can see this should be increasing anytime soon. There you go, you see? It decreased by 2 point, by 0 .0, 0 0.002 points. And yeah, that should be it. As you can see, those that's the result right now. We are able to send private transactions directly to flashbots and things like that. But yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Hope you enjoy this, and let me know if you if you want to learn something on this topic.